Hi, it's Peter Schiff. This is Monday, June 22nd, 2009. First on the markets, you know, the Dow was down about 200 points today. Another day where the Dow was weak, gold was weak, uh, the dollar was strong, uh, bonds were strong. I think what's happening now is, you know, the market's in an in a indecisive position. On the one hand, there are people that are looking for the markets to roll over and make new lows or at least retest the lows. And there are others that think that this uh, ongoing rally will continue and it will shrug off this decline. I'm not really sure into which camp I fall. Uh, I, I, you know, it's, it's just a guess in the short run what's going to happen in the markets. I, I, I wouldn't be surprised uh, either way. Uh, but what I do think will be different if we do have another a decline globally in stock prices, not just in the United States, but around the world. What I do expect to be different than the last decline is I do not believe that we will see a big rally in the dollar in conjunction with renewed stock weakness. I think that was the head fake of late 2008. I think a lot of people are assuming that if we get another uh, decline in the stock market, that it's going to be just like the last time and that the dollar will benefit. My guess is that will not happen. I think the dollar will suffer. And that will also change the dynamics regarding uh, the weakness. I think that will also mean that in this coming sell-off, uh, foreign stocks will not go down as much as foreign as U.S. stocks, even if you take out the currency changes. And that will be somewhat different to what happened in late 2008, where U.S. stocks outperformed on the way down. I do not think, my guess is that that will not happen again. Uh, also, I think that gold will be strong. I, uh, there are a lot of people who think that gold is going to roll over with the market the way it did in 2008. I tend to think that the odds favor that gold will rally. Time will tell if I'm right, but that's that's my take on the markets for now. Also interesting, uh, we got some statements from uh, former President George Bush, uh, I think on Friday, where he was critical of Barack Obama's handling of the economy. Basically, Bush said that we need market-based solutions, we need the government to stay out, or we need to get prosperity from the free market, uh, capitalism, we need smaller government. I mean, he said all the right things. Unfortunately, he looks like a complete hypocrite. And as I would expect, I read a lot of the reactions in the press and on the blogs, and basically they're all calling him out. I mean, they're basically reminding how can George Bush uh, be talking about limited government now? This is the George Bush that gave us the bailouts, that gave us the stimulus. After all, George Bush, while president, said we must abandon free market principles to save the free market. You know, unfortunately, George Bush abandoned free market principles the day he took his oath of office. You know, the truth is we needed to embrace our free market principles more than ever, or rather re-embrace them to solve the problems and throw out the big government principles that George Bush actually adopted and espoused throughout his entire presidency, the same big government policies that he has handed over to his successor, Barack Obama. But, you know, just like I've been saying on this issue, the Republicans really have no credibility, and it's very difficult for mainstream Republicans to criticize uh, what Barack Obama is doing. And for that respect, in many cases, I think the Republicans are actually more to blame for the problems that we're going to have in this country because they laid this foundation. You know, basically, they laid it up to the Democrats to pursue big government policies because on their watch, they helped destroy the economy by pursuing those same big government policies but by pretending they were pursuing free market policies. You know, also in the news today, you know, Goldman Sachs is talking about paying record bonuses at the end of this year after giving back its, its $10 billion in TARP money. <clears throat> now, the idea that, well, Goldman has earned the money now, they pay back the, the $10 billion so they can pay whatever they want, I think is, is kind of absurd. Because the $10 billion top money, TARP money, was not the only bailout that, that, that Goldman Sachs got. I mean, first of all, when the government bailed out AIG, AIG owed Bear Stern, I mean, owed uh, Goldman Sachs a lot of money. Had the government not bailed out AIG, Goldman might have gone under too. The fact that a lot of money was given to Goldman and it was funneled through AIG doesn't mean that Goldman didn't get bailed out. They did. And it wasn't just that transaction. I'm sure there are a lot of other transactions to which Goldman was a counterparty where they would have lost had it not been from government efforts to prop up other institutions other than Goldman Sachs. 
Also, you know, the the the, uh, Treas the Federal Reserve rather has purchased you know over a trillion dollars of troubled assets. I'm sure many of those troubled assets were unloaded on the Fed by Goldman Sachs, and of course many were unloaded by Goldman Sachs counterparties, which also helped Goldman Sachs. Also, the fact that the Fed is in there buying up credit card debt and mortgage debt and auto loans and student loans. This is obviously helping the valuation of other assets on, on Goldman's books and on the books of their counterparties. Also, the fact that the Federal Reserve has got interest rates at zero, that works for the benefit of Goldman Sachs. They are highly leveraged. If it wasn't for these irresponsibly, artificially low interest rates, Goldman Sachs would be facing much higher interest rates and they wouldn't be nearly as profitable. For all I know, they'd, they'd be broke. So to claim that Goldman is not the beneficiary of government bailouts while they're doling out these potential bonuses is nonsense. And I'm not against, you know, capitalism and I'm not against people earning money and earning a lot of money if they deserve it. But I don't think they deserve it when they earn it as a result of government subsidies and of government bailouts, whether it's directly to them or whether it's to their counterparties or, or whether it's through the policies that they're pursuing that specifically benefit leverage speculators and debtors like Goldman. And, you know, a lot of these Goldman Sachs profits, they're coming from speculation. They're coming from trading. Well, what if these, these uh, profits, these bets go bad next year? What if there's huge losses? One of the reasons that Goldman Sachs probably feels comfortable in, in making these huge big bets is because they know that if they ultimately fail, they're too big to fail and they're going to get another government rescue. You know, and to contrast, you know, the big firms, I mentioned how I have to face the regulators myself at Europe Pacific Capital. But, you know, just to give you my own experience, about six months ago, I set up a research department. And I now have five analysts at Europe Pacific Capital. They cover over 60 stocks. We're doing our own research as opposed to using the research of the, of the companies that we deal with. Well, my idea initially, I wanted to monetize the research. I wanted to start an institutional division. And provide my research to hedge funds, to mutual funds, in exchange for trading revenue. Well, it's been six months now, and FINRA, the regulators, have not approved me for research. So I have been unable to disseminate my research. Not only can I disseminate it to institutions, I can't even share it with my own clients. I have Europe's of a capital clients that want to see my research, and I can't show it to them. We can still use it internally, but the government won't let me show it to them. Now, this has cost me a lot of revenue. I've had to stop my hiring. I wanted to hire another three or five analysts, but I can't. I, I, I haven't been able to hire, hire my institutional sales trader. There's a couple of other guys in my banking division that I haven't been able to hire because the government is slowing down my expansion process. I'm comfortable with the fact that I, I can handle it, that I've got all my ducks in a row. I've got all my compliance under you know done. But I'm still waiting for government approval, and it's taking forever. You know, also on my BD, and partially, you know, this is partially my fault or my firm's fault, although, again, if the, if the rules were not so complex, maybe we wouldn't have made a mistake. But apparently, recently, my firm, I hired too many people. I hired more people than the government would allow me or the regulators. Basically, what I needed to do was get permission in advance because since I was growing so rapidly, the government or FINRA viewed it as a change of my business, not simply a hiring. So I had to get my new business plan approved in advance by the government. And we didn't understand it, or my compliance officer didn't understand it at the time. And I've since replaced him with a new compliance officer. Uh, you know, and I'm spending even more money now because they're still both there. But we misunderstood that. So we actually hired more people than we were allowed. And so now I'm on a hiring freeze. And for the last couple of months, I have not been able to hire any brokers. And there are a number of brokers I want to hire. i got a stack full of resumes. I'm planning on opening up new branches. I need to hire more brokers, yet I've been legally barred from doing it. And who knows how long, much longer this ban is going to be. It might be months before the government lets me hire people. So meanwhile, you know, you've got the government bailing out and giving money to all these firms that are firing people. I'm trying to hire them, and they're putting roadblocks in my path. And not only that... I don't know for sure, but I'm probably going to get fined uh, for hiring too many people. I don't know what the fine is going to be. Hopefully, I avoid it. But it might be fifty thousand. It might be a hundred thousand dollars. But look at the irony, right? You know, I'm not taking any TARP money. It's the companies that screwed up that got bailout money. Since I didn't screw up and I'm trying to expand, I get fined because I'm not expanding the way the government wants me to. Even though, of course, I'm not having any compliance issues with my clients. It's all about uh, dotting the, the, the I's and crossing the T's the way the government regulators want me to do it. And now we're going to have even more. Anyway, that's it for today. Thank you.